Hey, GearHeads, Jeff with Gear Report. We're still here at the Fire Expo 2021 in Imolaki, Florida at Force Center USA is the website. If you want to check out this facility, we are at the Maximum Security Prison to talk about the MDX line from Maxim Defense. And CJ, help me understand how these came about, what role you're intending for them to fill, and, and anything else that, that uh, folks may need to know about them. Yeah, sure. As David talked about a little bit ago, you know, on the commercial side of things, uh, what really kicked off us moving into an actual firearm piece was SOCOM solicitation for PDW. So we looked at that and <clears throat> we really thought we could bring something to the table and a better solution. You know, I did 20 years, uh, retired, did a lot of overseas trips and doing the low vis, close target recce, that type of mission set. Uh, I kind of had a 10.3 barrel or a pistol, you know, and so those are two very vast different things. Right. And it's really hard to hide a 10.3 in a vehicle. Yeah. But then as a pistol, you only have X amount of distance. Right. You know, and outside of the argument of muzzle velocities and distance and lethality, uh, this gives you a rifle carbine projectile going right. down the road to create that space, right? right? The the lethality is a different discussion, and that's why we started our ammo side of things too. But okay. that was really where we decided to, to take the company and move into an actual platform. And mm -hmm. so really we did that initially with the PDX. This one's a pistol. And we do it 5.56, 7.62, 39, and 300 blackout. Uh, what's unique about our 300 blackout, and that was for the SOCOM solicitation was 300 blackout, is we figured out how to run our gassing so we can do supers and subs with no moving parts. Right. And on the market, there's a whole lot of different supers and subs that exist right now, but you know, you gotta have really shoot some of the higher end ammo to get that supers and subs without any moving parts. So that's a uniqueness to our 300 blackout. <clears throat> so we went down that line um, and then the solicitation at SOCOM fell off the table for, for various other reasons under SOCOM. But, you know, and then we, we started listening to our other clientele and hey, we want a little bit better muzzle velocity. I'd like a little bit longer, you know, there's this mm -hmm. piece. So we came out with the eight and a half and the 10.3. So this one's the MDX 508 with the eight and a half inch barrel and the MDX 510 with a 10.3 barrel. And we do both, you know, the short barrel rifle variants for the mill mm -hmm. and LE, right. you know, because they don't really need uh, any of that. And then the pistol variants for the commercial market. Right. So. Um, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, a lot of our R&D team was, uh, was trained by Dr. Phil Dater, who's one of the, you know, one of the kings and grandfathers of suppression. So right. our, uh, our gassing and everything else runs, runs pretty wild and reliable. Uh, so it's, it's been pretty interesting to, to progress and move this forward. So when we talk about the government, there's a lot of processes and steps and certifications that we have to go through. And so we've been working with Fort Benning. Uh, they're looking at, or uh, MSCO had a requirement for a PDW, but in a pistol cow. Mm -hmm. And then Fort Benning through the Maneuver Center of Excellence and AWE, who take vendors in run live fires and force on force. Right. So we submitted to that and we had our conditional safety releases approved by ATEC Army Evaluation Test Command okay. for conditional safety releases. Uh, and those went to Fort Benning, all these variants to include all of our stock variants for the M4 upgrades. Mm -hmm. um, and everything came out very favorable in that aspect. So uh, we're currently moving forward and potentially doing some bailment agreements with the government for further evaluation at a brigade combat team level. Nice. Uh, all that's still in the works. And then, uh, as I mentioned to our suppressors earlier, uh, with AWE again, I work through the machine gun suppressor. So mm -hmm. we build an actual M240 machine gun suppressor. Right. And that has got a lot of favorable replies and reports. And so uh, that we're is currently- a tremendous challenge. It is. That you guys it is. When, when I was doing acquisitions, <laughs> uh, Sue LaRue and myself and several other people who now Sue works for me. We would try these machine gun suppressors and 
you would get up and half of your face is, has carbon and yeah. the noxious fumes and gases. And so we were looking at this as an actual green suitor, as an active duty acquisitions guy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you couldn't even hardly breathe with it. And so to be able to function and move forward with that and have very low back pressure right. and not increase in your cyclic speed, which then breaks additional parts inside the machine gun. Right. So we're very, very happy with that, mm -hmm. both in the MDX line and the suppressor line, we're getting a lot of traction internationally, uh, mm -hmm. and a lot of things are happening. Well, it's a neat forward. story in itself because typically the model that that I've seen is U.S. agencies want the exotic stuff from elsewhere. So it yeah. is kind of nice to flip the tables and send some exotic stuff. It is. It's it's been park. a lot of work, but you know, kind of one of our core values at the company is this is America. America is great. Yeah. There's absolutely no reason our tax dollar pay, you know, our tax dollars should be moving forward to a foreign owned company yeah. on the gov side when we can build it and, and provide it. So really that's how we see how we're moving forward. You know, uh, a lot of guys on the team within the company, we still have friends. We take care of the families as our friends are overseas. It's a family. So I try to make sure that whatever we're producing mm -hmm. gives them an advantage overseas. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's important. People do better when there's something on the line. Yeah. I think that, that accountability can be pretty heavy. CJ, thanks so much for My giving pleasure, us Jeff. The, the high level overview. Let's, uh, let's take a break. And when we come back, come back and join us. CJ is going to tell us all about the brand new uh, PDX and 300 blackout. And uh, we're, we're going to talk about before we get our hands on one to review it, let, let's understand the design philosophy, what it was built for, and maybe some expectations. And then we'll come back later, uh, weeks, months later, and tell you what we found when we got it out in the field. So until then, we'll see you at the range. Thanks, guys and gals. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments. A big thanks to our patrons for helping us bring you more unbiased, hands-on reviews. Thank you very much.